So my name is Amy and what we're going to be learning about today is how we can measure our electricity use at home, at school, or wherever we may be, maybe at work as well. So to start us off, this all has to do with our greater conversation about energy conservation. So understanding how we produce our electricity, where our electricity comes from, and how much electricity we use is super important to better understand the environmental impacts and economic impacts of our electricity use. Because it's always great to remember that electricity is not free. It is something that we have to pay for financially. And then also there are uh, some not great environmental impacts that come with the way that we make our electricity. So in our efforts to try to reduce and lower the amount of electricity that we use in our day-to-day -day lives, at school, at home, at work, uh, we need to understand how we can measure how much electricity we actually use. So to do that today, we are gonna be using a handy tool called a watt meter. So this is what it looks like, this little watt meter. These are pretty simple and you can find them at most hardware stores or you can also find them online. What a watt meter does is it measures how much electricity an electrical device uses. So as you can see, it has an outlet over here where you can plug in any electrical device that you're curious about learning how much electricity it uses. This other outlet part over here, you connect either directly to a wall outlet or what I'm going to be doing today is connecting it to uh, this extension cord here. So I already have my laptop charger um, connected here. And then uh, once we get started measuring things, uh, I'm going to connect this watt meter to that extension cord. So um, we are going to be testing out a couple of different electrical devices that I just happen to have here at home to have a better understanding of how much electricity do these different items use. So the first thing we're going to test out is this laptop charger that I have over here. So I'm actually going to unplug it from where it's plugged in right now. I'm going to plug in my watt meter. And right now when it's plugged in, I hope you can all see that it says 0, 0.0. Um, that is because there's nothing currently plugged into our watt meter. So I'm going to plug my laptop charger back in to this watt meter. And we are going to read what our watt meter says. So this measurement, and because this is a laptop charger, it's kind of takes a little bit to level out and to decide on just one stable number. So let's see, it's around 34, 33, 34. And so what that means, this is about 34. And if you can see the unit of measure over here is watts. And so watts is the unit of measure of how much, of how we measure how much electricity we use. So we measure it in watts. So this laptop charger says about 33, 34, it's going down a little bit. So about 34 watts of electricity are, is being used by my laptop charger at this moment. Now it's always important for us to remember that when we're talking about electricity use, time is very important to remember. And that is because if I were to watch TV, for example, for eight hours, that's a very different amount of electricity that I'm using if then instead if I were just to watch it for one hour. So whenever we are using a watt meter, the reading that we get in watts is in reference to one hour of use. So that 34 watts that we just saw for this laptop charger, that means that if I were to leave my laptop charger plugged in, and leave my laptop charging for one hour, in that one hour, uh, I would use 34 watts of electricity. So keep that in mind, because that's gonna come up again as we test out our different electrical devices. We are always talking about one hour of use. So now that we have kind of a baseline, so we know our uh, laptop was about 34 watts, let's try something else out. So something else that's very common is a phone charger. Let me just untangle mine for right now. 
Um, so we have a phone charger. When I plug in this phone charger, we see that it's 0.0. .0. This is very good for us to know because that means that even if I forget to unplug my phone charger or you know I'm lazy and I leave it plugged in the whole time, that way I don't have to bend down or <laughs> to plug it back in, that's okay because I am not wasting any electricity. That is reading 0, 0.0, meaning that even though my phone is not charging right now, I'm still not using any energy. And that's what we want. So I'm going to plug in this charger into my phone. And so let's read what our watt meter says. So we are right now at about six, 6.4 watts, 6.3. And so that is a lower number, right? So to charge this, I just so happen to have an iPhone, but to charge this iPhone, it is using 6.4, 6.3 watts. Now we have to remember this number is in reference to one hour. So if I were to charge this phone for one hour, it would be using 6.4 watts of electricity in that whole hour that we're charging. And it also depends, phone chargers and laptop chargers are a little tricky because it really also depends on, well, how much battery are you starting out with? So for example, my phone is currently at, let's see, I'm at exactly 50%. <laughs> so I'm exactly 50% battery. Um, and so for that, it's using about 6.3. But let's say I was in dire need of a charger and I was instead at about like 2% or 3% battery left on my phone. Um, my uh, watt meter would probably read a little bit higher because my charger would be working harder to charge my phone up so that it doesn't automatically turn off and I don't get to zero. But just to put it into perspective, this iPhone used about 6.4, 6.3 watts of electricity to charge. And in comparison, this laptop charger was using about 34 watts. Now let's try something a little different. So this is a different laptop charger. So laptop chargers, depending on what kind of computer you have, um, the charger for it will look different. So this is for another laptop I just happen to have. Um, and this is for a Windows laptop, which is why um, the charger looks different than for the other laptop, the other Mac laptop that I just showed. So for this Windows laptop, what I'm going to do is show you all. So we're gonna plug in this charger. And I want you all to notice that when I plugged in this charger, you, we have this little green light on our charger that turned on. And I hope you can all see over here on, well, it's on my right. Um, you can see that there is this little green light turned on. Now, unfortunately, that little green light turns on oops, even if my laptop is not plugged in. So what that automatically tells me is, uh-oh, this charger is using electricity even when it is not plugged into a computer. Now, if I wanted to know exactly how much electricity I'm wasting by just having this charger plugged in, we would check it on our watt meter. And so my watt meter right now is telling me that it's a very small amount. It's about 0 0.1, 0 0.2. So now let's watts. So now let's plug it into my laptop. And we see that the number is going up a little bit. So it's at about 0 0.6, 0 0.7. Now the reason why this number is so low, right, because our first charger was 34 watts, is that the laptop that I just plugged it into, it was already charged at 100%. And also it's turned off <laughs> my other laptop. So this is doing the bare minimum right now. It's not even charging it. So the bare minimum that it's using is about 0 0.6 watts of electricity. This is very important to note though, because sometimes, and a lot of people do this all the time, they leave their computers, their laptops plugged in 
all the time. And so this also sometimes happens at schools. If you have um, like those laptop carts that are always plugged in, um, even though your laptop can be turned off and it can already be charged at 100%, if by just having this charger plugged in um, and connected to your computer, it's still pulling some electricity. So right now it's pulling about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 watts. And that may seem like such a small amount, but you have to remember that that is every single hour. And so if you were to multiply that by 24 hours in a day, times 30 days in a month, times 12 months in a year, when you do all of that math, trust me, it adds up to a lot of electricity that is wasted and that unfortunately someone had to pay for, right? So let's try, oops, let's try something else. So this is something that maybe some people have in their homes, um, but I really like testing this out just because it is something that produces heat. Um, and the number of watts and the amount of electricity it uses is always very surprising. So we are going to test out a toaster. So I have over here a smallish toaster. This is not the newest toaster. It is very old. It's used, um, but that doesn't mean it's bad. You know, we should be reusing our things. <laughs> and so we're going to be testing out this toaster to see how much electricity it uses. So I'm going to set my toaster to be right in the middle. So it's right on medium over here. So my toaster has settings of one through five of how toasty you want something. So I'm going to set it right in the middle at three, just so we can get kind of like an average reading of what it would be like. So I'm going to take my toaster, we're going to plug it in. When I plug it in, it still says zero because it's not turned on yet. I'm going to make sure that this is not a fire hazard, make sure nothing is near my toaster because this is going to heat up. We are going to turn this on and I hope you all see these numbers going up and up and up. So my toaster is turning on. We are at about 800, 865 watts, 863. So I'm going to, uh, so I just turned it off just because I didn't want this to heat up a little too much, but I hope you all saw that that number went way high, right? So that was about over a little bit, over 860 watts of electricity. Let me just unplug this. 860 watts of electricity. Now we have to remember though, when we are measuring using that unit of watts, we are always talking about one hour of use. Now you can trust me that I am not using this toaster for one hour. If we were to cook something on this toaster for one hour, I would burn my house down. So we're not doing that. So that means that we have to do a little bit of math, right? So let's say what I got on my reading was about from what I saw, I'm going to use the number 864. So I'm going to open up my calculator on my phone and we are going to type in 864. So that's how many watts we are using in one hour. So let's say I am not toasting something for one hour because we do not want to burn our homes down. So let's say I'm toasting a bread, something else, maybe like a pop tart or something in there uh, or a bagel. So let's say I'm using it for three minutes. So I'm going to divide 864. I'm going to divide that by 60. And the reason is because there are 60 minutes in one hour and I get 14.4. So that means that this toaster uses 14.4 watts of electricity every single minute that it is turned on. So now that we have that 14.4, if I toast my bread for three minutes, I'm gonna multiply that by three, and I get that to toast bread for three minutes using this toaster, I would use 43.2 watts of electricity, right? So 
when we have our watt meter, just because this is giving us a reading of one hour in watts, it's going to tell us whatever number shows up here, how much electricity is something using if we were to have it on for one hour. If we are using something for less than an hour or if we're using something for more than an hour, that's fine. We can just figure out the math to figure out you know, how much electricity exactly am I using for the amount of time that I end up using my toaster, my charger, or anything of that sort. All right, so my toaster aside, the last thing we're gonna test out is going to be something that is found everywhere and in everyone's homes. We're talking about light bulbs. Now, light bulbs are super important because a lot of the electricity that we use in our homes is being used by light bulbs. Light bulbs are very unique in that they, we usually, most people usually have more than one light bulb in their home. So if you kind of think about it, there's light bulbs in e almost every room in your home. Um, if you think about school, there are so many light bulbs in your classroom. If anyone has ever, you know, <laughs> been bored in class or something and you look up at your ceiling and you count how many light bulbs are in your classroom, there are so, so many. So light bulbs uh, come in many different sizes and shapes. So we're going to be talking about the light bulbs that are commonly found in people's homes. So the light bulbs that are found in school are much bigger because your classroom is much, much bigger than most of the rooms in your house. So the, the light bulbs that are found in people's homes, there are three that we are going to be exploring today. So the three light bulbs that we're gonna be looking at today are the ones that I'm holding up. We have, first up, we're gonna be looking at what we call an incandescent light bulb. This is what I like to call the old school light bulb. You know, this is the light bulb, like the OG light bulb. It's been around for a long time. These are very easy to find, very, very cheap to purchase as well. You can find these like at the 99 cent store. You can get like three for a dollar. Um, these are very common. So these are our incandescent light bulbs. Next up, we're going to be looking at our CFL light bulbs. So our CFL light bulbs have this very distinct shape. Um, so they have kind of like this swirly shape over here. Um, and a lot of people have these in their homes or maybe have them in their homes or have seen these before. So we're gonna be looking at these and testing these out. And then our third light bulb is our LED light bulb. So this is an LED light bulb. These also come in many different colors and shapes and sizes as well. Um, but this just so happens to be the one that I have that we're gonna be testing out. So this LED light bulb, um, these are kind of the newest type of light bulb on the market. They've been around for almost 10 years or you know, a little bit more than 10 years. Um, and we're gonna talk about you know, all three of these light bulbs and how they're all different. Now, something very important to know about light bulbs, and you've probably noticed this if you've ever you know, stood close to a lamp or, or to a light bulb, is that some light bulbs give off a lot of heat. They get very hot and if you stand close to them, you know, you can feel that heat. Um, and so, you know, there's lots of different uses for light bulbs. So for example, if anyone has ever been to like a fast food restaurant or something like that, and sometimes they have things like the french fries are underneath these like huge lamps with these like very bright light bulbs. So those light bulbs are designed to be heat lamps. And so they, li they literally give off light and they give off heat so that they can keep food hot uh, for later on, right? So that way, even if you cook something, it's not gonna get cold, just put it under a heat lamp and it keeps it warm. So lots of different light bulbs release different amounts of heat. Now, if we think about it in our own homes, the purpose of why we even have light bulbs is not to produce heat, we want light bulbs so that we can see, so that we can have light in our homes, in our rooms, in the places where we want there to be light. So for us, for our light bulbs in our home, heat is a form of energy loss. And that means that if a light bulb is releasing a lot of heat, it's not what we want. 
It is considered, it makes the light bulb be considered inefficient because the goal of us having a light bulb at home is that we want to produce light. We do not want to produce heat. And if your light bulb is producing a lot of heat, that heat is a form of energy, just like light is a form of energy. So if we were to think about in terms of uh, energy and in, term of, uh, in terms of energy transformations, in order for us to turn on a light bulb, we need to take electrical energy. So the electricity that's traveling through, you know, the wires either inside your walls or wherever you end up um, connecting your light bulb. So we take that electrical energy and we need to convert that to light energy. Now, if your light bulb gives off a lot of heat, that energy conversion is different because you're not only converting it from electrical energy to light energy, you're also converting from electrical energy to heat energy. And if we remember again, like I said, electricity is not free, we have to pay for it. You are paying for all of this heat loss. And so, so that is why light bulbs that release a lot of heat are considered inefficient light bulbs. Now for us in this experiment that we're about to do to test out these three different light bulbs, I am going to be using one of these laser thermometers. These have become pretty common now because they're used a lot to you know, measure people's temperature to see if they have fevers. But we're also going to use it to measure the temperature of our light bulbs. And remember, the hotter the light bulb gets, that means the more heat is released, the more inefficient it is. And that's what we don't want. We want a super efficient, low energy using, very bright, beautiful light bulb. Because what we want is light, we do not want heat. So we're gonna test these out in terms of, um, in uh, like how long they've been around for. So our incandescent light bulb has been around for over a hundred years. <laughs> So this is the first one we're gonna test out. So I have this little adapter plugged in here um, so that I can plug it into my watt meter. Please just be mindful that this is gonna be very bright. All right, so this is a very bright light bulb for our watt meter. Let's see if we can all see that. So it shows about 61 watts of electricity. So this light bulb, this incandescent light bulb would be using about 61 watts of electricity in one hour. So if we were to leave this light bulb plugged in or if you have it in a lamp, you were to leave it on for one hour, it would use 61 watts of electricity in that hour. So now we're gonna use our thermometer I'm gonna point it, oops, point it at this light bulb. And then we get that it is about 197 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, the longer I leave this light bulb on, the hotter it's going to get. So I'm not gonna do that because we have to test out these other light bulbs. But let's just see another rating, another rating. Yeah, so it's gone up to 207 degrees Fahrenheit. So oops. this incandescent light bulb, I can even, I mean, I can feel the heat coming off of this light bulb. I'm not gonna touch it because I don't wanna hurt myself, but this light bulb uses 61 watts of electricity if we were to leave it on for one hour. And it got over 200 degrees Fahrenheit in temperature in like the one minute that I had it plugged in. So a lot of these light bulbs, they get very, very hot. Um, so these are considered inefficient because of the temperature. But let's hold off and let's wait until we can compare this one to our other two light bulbs. So our next one up is our CFL light bulb. So this CFL light bulb with this very distinct shape, we are going to do the same thing. We're gonna plug this in. We're gonna plug this in. We're going to see what our watt meter reading is. So this says about 17, well, oh, went up to 18. All right, so we're at about 18.8. We're gonna go up to 19. And 
And this is also, um, since I just plugged it in, it usually gets brighter um, if you leave it plugged in for a little bit. So right now we're at about 20.4, 20.6. This will probably level out at about 21 or 22. So let's say 21. So this light bulb, the CFL light bulb is going to use 21 watts of electricity if it is left on for one hour. So that is already a very big shift, very big change from this first light bulb that uses 61 watts of electricity. We already cut that down and now we are using about 21 watts of electricity in the same amount of time, right? So they're both turned on for one hour. This is gonna use 61 watts and this is gonna use 21. Now our temperature test, let's see how hot this light bulb gets. Oops. So it does get warm. It's at 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So 110, that is a little, you know, that's a little warmer than, for example, our own body temperature, but it is not as significant. Remember, this light bulb went up to over 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So our CFL light bulbs use less energy, right? 21 watts versus 61 watts. And these CFL light bulbs also do not get as hot meaning that if we were to compare these two, our winner so far is our CFL light bulb because it uses less energy and it does not uh, release a lot of heat. Now, last one we're testing out is our LED light bulb. So our LED light bulb, we're gonna do the same process. We're gonna plug it in. We are going to, whoops, <laughs> so bright. We're going to try and see if we can get a reading from our watt meter. So hopefully you can all see that it says 10.8. This usually goes up to about 11 and it usually stays around 11. So this LED light bulb is using 11 watts of electricity if it were to be turned on for one hour. So it's the same amount of time, but it's going to be using much less energy than our other two light bulbs that we just tested out. So this LED light bulb uses 11, as a reminder, our first incandescent light bulb uses 61, our second CFL uses 21 watts, and then this last LED uses 11 watts of electricity. So just to put that a little bit into perspective, if I were to have six, six of these um, LED light bulbs in my home turned on for one hour, all six of them turned on for one hour, it would use the, almost the same amount of electricity, just a little bit of a difference, we use almost the same amount of electricity than if I just had one of these incandescent light bulbs on for one hour. So I can have six of these for the same amount of electricity, for the same you know amount of electricity used in just one of these incandescent. So now let's do our temperature check, right? Let's do our temperature little uh, testing of it. So I'm gonna point and it ends up being 80 degrees. So this is just 80 degrees Fahrenheit. This is cooler than our own body temperature. So LED light bulbs, you can literally touch them. You can put your hand on there. You can leave your hand on there for hours and this is not going to heat up. LED light bulbs are considered the most efficient light bulbs on the market so far, the most efficient ones you can purchase in comparison to the other types of light bulbs that exist. So see, uh, sorry, LED light bulbs are the best choice in purchasing light bulbs if you are interested in conserving energy and lowering the amount of electricity that you use, I would highly recommend making that switch to LED light bulbs. For all of the reasons we just explored, uh, they do not heat up um, and they also use so much less power. They use much less electricity. So again, this first one, incandescent, used 61 watts of electricity. Our CFL uses about 21 watts of electricity. And our winner, our LED light bulb, uh, only uses about 11 watts of electricity in one hour. 
So if we were to try to calculate how much electricity I use in my home in all of my lights, I would have to do a little scavenger hunt, right? I would have to do a little, you know, a little bit of math as well. I would have to try to count how many light bulbs I have in my home. I would have to try to identify, do I have all one type of light bulb or do I have many different types of light bulbs in my home? And then I would just have to add those all up, right? But always keeping in mind, we have to estimate, well, how long do you leave those lights turned on for, right? So we always recommend that you try to use natural sunlight, light coming in naturally from windows if they're available to you. So that way you don't have to constantly keep having your lights turned on. Um, and then also to be investing uh, in these LED light bulbs because they uh, use so much less energy and it will have a significant impact on your energy bills because you're using less electricity um, and you're using more efficient light bulbs, your energy bills will also decrease. So I hope that that was informative for you all. I hope that now you are a little bit more curious about, well, how much electricity do I use? How much electricity are these different things that I have around me using? Um, and just to keep in mind that even if you do not have access to a watt meter, you can still look up the wattage, you can still look up how much, uh, how many watts different electrical devices use by just simply looking them online. You can very much just Google. Um, if I wanted to figure out how much does uh, my desktop computer, um, how many watts does my desktop computer use, you can Google that. You can also Google, you know, larger appliances. So if you are curious about like your refrigerator, you can, you can Google how much uh, electricity does a refrigerator use. Um, and so there's lots of resources available online, even if you do not have physical access to a watt meter like this. So thank you all so much. Uh, I hope that this was informative to you. And I hope that you take this knowledge and be a little bit more curious about your own electricity use and how you can work towards conserving energy and reducing your own personal electrical consumption. So thank you.